Hey hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more r slash am I the butthole. If you love a Reddit story, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack straight on with today's stories. And our first story does follow with an update from Miserable Sample 7520 who says, Am I the arsehole for telling my stepdad and stepbrother that biological relationships are more important? My bio dad was never in my life and my mum married my stepdad when I was four. He found out he had a son when I was eight. My brother was 12 years old then. He lived full time with us from the next year. He would pay much more attention to him. I don't know if it was because he was his child or because he was a boy. He rarely made time for me and I just tagged along to do what my brother wanted to do so that I could spend time with them. I always felt like a third wheel and I was hoping things would improve after my brother went to college but yeah, he really didn't spend more time with me and it actually decreased because we didn't have my brother to do things with. I am the odd one in the family. Everyone else has a strong bond and I am just this burden they have to bear for a few more years. My mum talks about how hard raising me alone was and sometimes she talks about the choices she was forced to make at the time and I don't know, I think her life would have been so much easier if she had given me away or something. My brother and dad were having a conversation about adoption because my brother thinks he wants to adopt in the future. Dad said something like, it was love that made family and not biology. I know that is a lie, he knows it too and I interjected and told him that biological relationships were more important too and it was kind of shitty to ignore that. My brother and dad went really quiet and they changed the topic. I could see that my brother was really upset and he didn't really interact with me the rest of the day. My mum is furious with me and she said that what I said was cruel and it was very disappointing that I would think something like that and she was really mad. I didn't want to hurt them at all. I don't even know why I said it. I feel like an absolute vile human right now. I know I hurt them both. I was just an asshole. And we're going to start with a deleted user on this one who says, not the asshole, but you probably should have actually explained yourself. Saying something like that without context is going to come across assholeish. It sounds like your brother has taken that to mean that you may not love him as a brother, and that is not what you meant. Explain yourself. Tell them that you feel that your stepdad has given your brother more love and attention, and you've always assumed it's because you're not biologically related to him. Go from there. Irish Life 2016 says not the asshole at all. You just said what you have been experiencing regarding the way they've treated you. They say you're part of the family, but in reality, you are not and they treat you differently, but they don't want to see or own that. I was raised in a similar situation. I was raised by my uncle and aunt who grew up with their children and no matter what they say regarding being family, I was always treated differently. I was once told I wasn't part of the family. Apart from everything, I grew up wellish and left them move countries and I couldn't be happier. Very, very quiet says not the arsehole. While I think that telling your stepdad that biology is more important than love was kind of shitty thing to say, I get the feeling that you don't really believe it yourself. You seem to care a lot about him and your stepbrother. You said you always feel like a third wheel, probably because you love them enough to want to spend time with them and consider them as your family. Now, I don't know all the dynamics in your family, but it is not unusual for parents to share more interests with one of their kids. It doesn't mean that your stepdad doesn't love you or love you less. I think you need to have a conversation with him about how you feel. Blade Soul asks, Info, did you ever mention how you felt about your relationship with your stepdad? OP replies saying, I have not. Everything is below the surface right now and I don't know. I'm scared if I bring it up, they will stop pretending to care. Which is stupid to think, but that is how I feel. Winsong McFluffy Fart says, great name, you are not the asshole for pointing out the role that biology had in your relationships with each other. I think you might need to sit down and get those thoughts and feelings out. That you wanted more of a connection, but didn't feel loved or cared for by stepdad, and saw that he was willing to go the distance with his bio child, and that it made you think that biology is actually very important to your stepdad. Equivalent Caller 59 says not the arsehole, your mother, stepfather and stepbrother need to look at themselves because it's them and their behavior that made you think this way. And one more before the update from Worry About You Ho who says not the arsehole for pointing out the obvious hypocrisy they were conveniently glossing over. But you should probably think about therapy in case you're holding on to any resentment from their treatment of you while growing up. 
their stepfather and stepbrother clearly lacking in self-awareness if they not only couldn't see how their treatment affected you but also chose to discuss the possibility of adoption in front of you whether or not they were even aware of the difference in attention you and your stepbrother got as children your mother also sucks for acting like you forced her to raise you at gunpoint since she clearly has some resentment of her own from her own damn choices and taking her precious husband's side over a damn child furious for what she's being ridiculous now let's move on to the update to see what happened there so update people told me that i'm not the asshole but i needed to explain what i meant I honestly didn't want to, but my brother was not texting me as regularly and I felt hurt and I wanted to fix things. I took some time to practice out what I wanted to say with my best friend. They wanted to listen and I told them how I felt left out from stuff. They were defensive and were saying, we always included you and mum was about to scold me. I started to cry. I was practically bawling and all of my little speech went out the window and I cried a lot and told them that I knew dad cared a lot more about my brother. I could see that he was just tolerating me. I could see how disinterested he was. I also told mum that I felt like a burden just forced to deal with and sometimes I feel like they were all waiting for me to turn 18 to be done with me. It took me a lot of time to get it out in between crying. Mum and dad were also crying. I've never seen dad cry before. We didn't really talk much that day. They just hugged me. My dad apologized and told me he had messed up and he couldn't do anything about what happened before but he will really try hard to fix this. My mum also talked to me. She told me that I had been tough, but she never thought of me as a burden. She said she loved me and that was the best thing that happened to her. I still feel hurt, but I feel so much better now. And I think that was maybe the best thing that could happen in that scenario. Although Opie had to go through an experience of breaking down and crying in front of her family to actually get it out. It made, hopefully it's made them realize what's been going on and, and help Opie in the future. But what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from Abilene, who says, am I the asshole for saying I expect my friend to pay back the full cost of my coat that she lost? My 18 female friend, 18 female, was in my dorm room because I was hosting our study group. Afterwards, she was going to a party and was in a tiny dress. So she asked if she could borrow my coat since it's freezing out. I said, sure. She can take the purple one on my bed. She told me the next day that she was sorry and she had lost my coat at the party and she hadn't taken the purple one. She had taken the black one on my bed since it looked warmer. The coat she lost was a Moncler. Sorry if I got the pronunciation wrong and I never would have let her take it. I told her she could take my purple coat, which is the coat I take to parties since I'm not worried about it getting lost or stolen. I'm really upset that she lost my coat and I said she needs to pay me back the full cost of it. She said sure, but didn't realize how much it is. Then she got upset saying she could never come up with the money. I said that's not my fault since she shouldn't have taken it and she became hysterical when I said I want all the money paid back. Am I the asshole for saying she had to come up with the full cost of the coat and pay it back? And holy moly, I just typed in Moncler into Google and the top ones I can see it already, obviously they're from different people, but 1,600, 2,000, 15,000? <laughs> what the hell? I'd be storing that in a safe, but I, it's got to be a not the arsehole from me because she basically stole it. You gave her permission to take one coat, she took the other, she stole your item, she needs to pay it back. Simple as that to me, but Nut Michelle says not the arsehole. She purposely took the wrong coat and lost it. She is definitely responsible for replacing it. Did she go back to the place where the party was held to see if the coat was still there? I doubt that's going to be... I doubt that's going to turn up. Someone knew what that was and took it. Unrooted says not the arsehole. If she doesn't pay you back for it, then she stole it. Simple as that. Fallen Angel says not the arsehole. You gave her permission for the purple coat. It's her fault, so she has to pay you back. People need to ask to learn for permission before taking people's things. It would avoid situations like this. She should have been better prepared. She caused all her issues. I would hold firm. Get it down in writing that she took your coat without permission. Emily and Kat says not the arsehole. You specified which one to take. She took another, lost it, and is unhappy it wasn't the same price as, say, the other one, for example. Silver Titan says not the arsehole. She stole your coat and then lost it. She never gave her permission to take the other coat. I don't know what Moncler means, but I'm going to assume it means expensive. Oh, it is. It isn't your problem that she didn't know how expensive it was. She stole it and lost it. 
Unfortunately, you have a choice to make, lose your friend or lose your money. It is her fault and she should be held accountable. But this is going to affect your friendship. You probably aren't going to have both things at the end of this. And one more from Myth who says not the asshole. She took something of yours and lost it. If you'd borrowed her iPhone and her laptop and lost it, she'd demand that you replace it. This is no different. You didn't give her permission to take that jacket. She either realized it was more valuable and wanted to show off, or she just wanted the one that better matched her dress. Either way, she's fully responsible for it. She needs to find a way to pay for it, even if it's in installments. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from unlucky amount 4925 who asks, am I the asshole for starting a fight with my mother-in-law over Christmas pajamas? Mother-in-law and I have an awful, awful relationship. I feel in a lot of ways it isn't salvageable, but we had a housing crisis a few months ago and she took us in despite the bad blood. So that was humbling. We will be out in about a month. I have two children, five male and three female, and mother-in-law has a four-year-old daughter who is my husband's half-sister. Recently, I bought my kids their matching Christmas PJs and they were running around the house in them. Sister-in-law questioned why they matched and she didn't. And mother-in-law said, I'm going to get yours when we go out on Friday, but you'll get different ones. Sister-in-law asked why and mother-in-law's answer was, because you guys aren't all a family. They are family and we are a family. Anyway, you told me you wanted penguins. I confronted mother-in-law when the kids weren't in hearing range and asked why she said that. Mother-in-law said sister-in-law had already said she wanted penguins. I said that was fine, but what does she mean we aren't a family? Mother-in-law said her family is her and her husband and sister-in-law. She will always have love for her son, but our kids are mine and we have our own family. I told her I feel sorry for sister-in-law for having her for a mother and I feel sorry for my kids that they ever met her. I walked off because I could hardly control my anger. Mother-in-law yelled after me that I'm a psycho bitch and I'd be homeless without her. It almost felt in this one that you went out looking for this fight. When I think of like families with my brothers and stuff, I think that that brother has his family, the other brother has that family, you know, and they're, they're all their own little units. So the way mother-in-law came into this one saying, you know, we're a family, so I'll get you your pajamas, felt like it was just that, their little unit, they are a family. And then you, it felt like you went overboard looking for this fight and then started it. So yes, I think I'm gonna call you the arsehole in this one. But Early Light says you're the arsehole. If you considered sister-in-law part of your family, why didn't you buy her matching jammies too? She said in words what you already done in actions. Scuba CC says you're the asshole. She is correct. You and your husband and kids are your own nuclear family. Mother-in-law and sister-in-law are your extended family. A four-year-old isn't old enough to understand the terminology, so mother-in-law explained it in an age-appropriate way. Peace Please says this woman is putting a roof over your head. Grow up and learn how to have an adult relationship. You're the asshole. Gift Recent says you're the arsehole. First, I don't see it explicitly stated here that you offered to buy sister-in-law pajamas or discussed having different ones with mother-in-law before. So not including a four-year-old in the match in PJ seems purposeful and left mother-in-law to come up with a reason that doesn't hurt the child's feelings. Second, I think she explained your different families pretty well. She is setting a boundary. Most people dream for their mother-in-law to realize they are their own family within a larger one. I'm not sure if there is a lot of context left, but you seem to be the one causing unnecessary drama here. And one more from Dinosaur Domination who says you're the arsehole. Your mother-in-law is actually right. Your family consists of you, your husband, and your kids. That is your nuclear family. Anyone else now belongs to your extended family. Mother-in-law's nuclear family, now that her son has grown up, left home and has his own kids, is her husband and a four-year-old daughter. Grow up, OP. You owe her an apology. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from Born Replacement 366 who asks, am I the asshole for applying all and humiliating my colleague at work? I am an in-house lawyer at a large MNC. I provide legal advice to the various internal departments of the MNC. I have one colleague from the sales department, however, who always copies me in the middle of his email chains with external affiliated companies, asking me to provide legal advice to these affiliated entities. He does this without any courtesy heads up beforehand or any context provided. 
Initially, I was polite and told him not to do so, as these external affiliates have their own legal departments and I should not be advising them and taking on unnecessary risk exposure for our company. I would also be sacrificing privilege. He said he understood, but after a few weeks would do the same thing. Finally, the other day, he did it again, but this time with an external affiliated company that my company may have a potential dispute with. In my anger, I removed all external parties from the thread and replied all to the people remaining the thread from my company. Bill, not his real name, you have to stop dropping your legal counsel into the middle of email threads with external parties without any heads up or context. My job is to advise our company and not to advise counterparties with whom we might have potential disputes. You cannot keep doing this. You are compromising our company's interests. Please tell your team too. Bill did not reply to my email and afterwards a few of our mutual colleagues told me I had gone too far. I understand that I could have been more civil, but I was frustrated because Bill has been doing this consistently and had not appeared to internalize my more polite previous warnings. My subordinates who were on the thread were all happy though and I overheard some of them quoting my email to each other with relish. They didn't know I could hear them. It turns out that they have all experienced the same thing from Bill's team. Am I the arsehole? Now, it's definitely not the arsehole and I think you handled things pretty well at first, well, all the way through to be fair, but I do question and I know you asked him nicely to begin with a couple of times and he ignored it. Wasn't there anyone above him you could go to first? That would be my only question, but it's a still not the arsehole from me. I think he got what he deserved in this one. Gray Ignis says, not the arsehole. That sort of crap can cause problems down the road. Also, why wouldn't he privately ask you for legal advice instead of having you advise potential competitors or create liability for the company? Your friend doesn't seem to get that you're the company's lawyer and not some simple chill guy who hands out legal advice willy nilly. MM172 says not the arsehole. And if this doesn't resolve the problem, it's time to either take this to HR or the hires up. If Bill truly does not understand why he can't do what he's doing beyond OP will yell at me, I worry what other embarrassment or legal liability his behavior is about to cause the company that you don't know about yet. Grounded55 says, not the answer. What the F is wrong with Bill? Trying to look good to clients while ignoring the legal ramifications. He could get you and your company in trouble. You did not go too far. Some salespeople are just too damn pushy. SMDHXX17 says, not the arsehole. I am also an in-house lawyer at a large MNC and you did what you had to do to get this fundamental piece of information across. I would have also copied his boss and the general counsel as well. So you even limited the fallout for him beyond what you could have done. And one more from Zaffold Beeblebrox who says, not the arsehole, you did hit the nuclear button, but it seems necessary. Your other option, having already approached Bill about this, would have been to contact his superior directly and privately, with copies of emails. However, having worked at an MNC for many years myself as an engineer, I understand that sometimes the bosses of people that are actively fucking up are often conflict avoidant and have an aversion to actually fixing the problem. Also, sales and marketing people shake my head. And that's a good point there as well. And he's probably saved Bill his job in some ways. If he did go above him, I wonder how much worse it would have got for Bill as well. Interesting. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we're gonna move on to another story. And our next story comes from a random name who says, am I the asshole for denying my husband a spot? Every time we buy a new couch or furniture set, my husband chooses the best seat and tries to claim it as his spot. <laughs> Growing up, every patriarch had a spot in their homes. Anytime a kid or grandkid or spouse sat in said spot, they did so knowing if the man of the house came into the living room, they would have to vacate the seat for him. My stepdad had a spot growing up and it seems so ridiculous to me to have to move when there were plenty of similarly available places to sit. We have two sons and I think it's disrespectful to expect someone to get up after being the first to claim a seat just because someone else comes in the room especially when there's enough seating for the whole family in the living room. This is completely different than offering an elderly the only available seat on, say, a bus or during a family gathering, where I would absolutely agree that youngins should move to the floor to accommodate or show respect. Conversely, my husband thinks it's a good lesson in respect and says I could claim a spot for myself. Am I the asshole for shooting down my husband's spot dreams? <laughs> 
And there is a little edit, which I'm going to cover straight away, which says, y'all are wild. What a time to be alive. My husband read this post and we had some good laughs. We did come to a spot agreement because honestly, it's not that serious. Keep on smashing the patriarchy. <laughs> now, I grew up in a house where, you know, everyone had their spot on the couch, the chair. My mum and dad had their own chairs and I was on the sofa. It was never a big deal or anything like that, though. It wasn't like, we got to get up. Dad's coming <laughs> or anything like that. And come to think of it, I seem to have a favorite spot on the couch myself these days. But we will start with little fox unicorn who says, not the asshole. We no longer live in the 50s. <laughs> Nevertheless says, not the asshole. This is patriarchal nonsense and reeks of king of his castle bullshit. Everyone has a preferred seat, but the whole that is dad's chair thing is weird and entitled. Redditor girl says, lol, just tell your husband he is not Sheldon Cooper. Once he wins a Nobel Prize, he can claim a spot. Until then, just say no, not the arsehole. Lemo2000 says, not the arsehole. This is one of those stupid things that only exists because people hated it when growing up and now want to be on the other side of it. Neen it says, it depends on how it works. I have a spot and every so often I switch my spot, but no one generally sits in mine because I have my knitting and plug set up as well as the various books I'm studying. I use my iPads for my charts. So basically it's inconvenient for the person who sits there when I come in and make give me all the crap as I sit somewhere else. I don't mind them sitting where I normally do. It's just not convenient. The real ones with spot issues are the animals. The dog is very sad when a human kicks him out of his favorite spot on the couch. The 16 year old grumpy cat spot is on the back of the couch near the dog spot. She sits up there glaring at the dog <laughs> who deigns to lie on the couch, breathing. How dare he? <laughs> You look like shit who says, you're the asshole. Me and my roommates have spots like shit. It's not that serious, dude. Let him have a spot and fight something worth fighting. No ad says you're the asshole. Why make a big deal out of this? My parents both had their spots. And when they came home tired from work, you better believe we kids got up so they can rest and enjoy their spots. I don't know your situation, but kids need to respect their parents. And one more from Newton Man 419 who says you're the asshole. Is this the hill you really want to die on? Fighting the patriarchy via a spot on the couch. This seems like a trivial thing to fight over and almost like you are pushing your issues onto your husband. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Do you have your own favorite spot? What do you think of it? Would you give it up for someone? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and a huge thank you for spending your time with me today. If you love Am I the Arsehole stories or relationship stories, there's a couple of playlists on your screen right now as I speak that you can click on and it scroll through for you. Don't forget to let me know what you're up to whilst you're listening today. I absolutely love to hear it. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. Yeah, man, I remember being so naive when life was good, weather and palm trees. Back in the day, you were everything I need. But then along came a time when you crushed my dreams Oh yeah, you played me like a fool When you made me believe that the line between love wasn't thick enough to read Oh yeah, you see we in despair, crime everywhere You're selling false hope cause you just don't